Hi guys and welcome back to Hilltop Farm. I'm Jay and today we are going to be making chicken in a red pepper sauce. Now this particular recipe is fantastic. It's actually um, quite easy to do. Um, takes doesn't take a lot, lot of time either and looks one of those dishes that when you serve it up and people taste it they think you've been slaving away all day. I like those kind of things. Now we start with four of these beautiful uh, here in Australia we call them capsicum um, it, I know they're called red peppers or bell peppers in uh, other countries but I mean look at that beautiful magnificent colour on those been out growing in the good heat of the Australian sun these have none of this rubbish growing on a string dangling in water in a factory here this one's been getting a sun Australian sun tan okay so what we do is we de-seed it and we chop it up into these quite hefty big chunks okay then we get 12 uh, shallots now I don't know about other countries but in this country a lot of people majority of people think shallots is actually spring onions or green onions and they're not a shallot is that it is a small delicately flavored French onion okay that's what you have to find 12 of those all right and you top and tail them peel them they end up like that just cut them in halves or quarters so it's all very rough here okay four big cloves of garlic that again it just peeled and cut in half I'm just going to finish off uh, cutting these two up and then we'll be back and I'll show you what to do with them the next thing we want to do is we want to melt some um, butter in a frying pan with some olive oil the olive oil um, stops the butter from scorching okay melt it down now into this we're going to put all of our shallots and garlic okay give them a mix round Now it's important to keep an eye on the temperature here. Okay, you don't you don't want to burn. So keep an eye on the heat. Turn it down when necessary. Okay, now once they're nicely coated, pop in all your lovely capsicum all your lovely capsicum or pepper depending on your country it's funny isn't it how from one country to another we call things differently I mean peppers are a uh, and capsicum, good case in point. Um, I know um, even from state to state here in Australia things can be different. Um, I was watching um, Bev Wolfie on uh, our Half Acre Homestead um, the other day and she was talking about um, turnips and she was saying how um, she, being Canadian, um, referred to them as turnips. 
but she was addressing her American subscribers and saying they'll know them as rutabakers. Well, Australia and the UK, we call, we do have turnips, but they're something different. But we call what they call turnips and rutabakers, we call sweet, um, which is the, the yellow one with the purple top. Um, now if it's got a purple top and it's white, that's what we call a turnip and that's, that, that's got a totally different taste to it, um, completely. Anyway, with this, if you cover it and have it on low and watch it for five or ten minutes, um, you don't want to cook it, you just want to see the first signs of the, um, the pepper, capsicum, whatever, um, going a little bit limp. Alright, so we'll come back when it started to do that. Oh, the smell of those peppers is glorious. Okay. See how they're starting to sort of go more orange, losing a bit of their colour? That's a sign that they're, um, they're starting to, to be how you want. Now, take a slotted spoon. Whoops. Just knock the camera there. Okay, take it all out of there. Now turn it down while I'm doing this. Now I want to leave all the juice, well as much of the juice behind. We pop that to one side and we grab our chicken. Okay, now there are different ways of doing this. You can do it quite cheaply, particularly if you um, use chicken pieces, chicken drumsticks, things like that. Works perfectly alright. You can just take a, a whole chicken and cut it into pieces um, and do it that way. I'm choosing to use chicken fillets. Um, because we have people coming to dinner. It's easier to serve each person an individual fillet um, then put the sauce on top. First things first, we get our frying pan back up to heat with our pan juices in there. I might add a splash more olive oil you know me guys, I don't believe in skimping. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lightly brown these guys. Um, literally just a minute or two, and when I say brown, probably the wrong word, seal. Um, a minute or so on each side. Um, and then take them out of the heat. Okay, so that, I mean that's really all I want to do at this stage is um, just stop them bleeding too much. Okay. Now when these are all done, I'll come back and show you what's next. Okay, so once you've sealed your meat, you're going to want to assemble it all in a nice casserole dish. I've got this one, 
and what we're going to do is we're going to do a few layers. So we start with our shallot pepper combo. What we do, we put a layer of that in because we want to cover the bottom. All right. Now, as I have six fillets, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do layers of two. Now, push them down. Okay, once you've done the first layer, you're going to want to take some tomato paste or tomato puree, whatever you call it. Okay. And put one good spoonful in. Alright. Then we do some more. of our capsicum slash pepper and shallot okay and another couple of chicken fillets Now, on this layer, do two. Okay, two um, tomato paste. Okay, now what you also want to do on this layer is we've got two generous teaspoons of dried oregano or oregano whichever you say now sprinkle all that in okay then you're going to do another another layer here now do bear in mind won't you that that's a total of three generous spoonfuls of tomato paste you've done. Now, our final layer of chicken breast. Now, you can do this even if you're dealing with chicken pieces. Okay, layer it. And as that's the last one, I shall pour in the juices that came out of that, out of the frying pan. Okay. And I shall put the last of the capsicum and shallots in, again with the pan juices. Okay, try and get it level. A couple of generous pinches of black pepper. And our pink Himalayan salt. Okay, now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to top this up with white wine. I recommend a Chardonnay for this particular one. Um, one thing I want to put straight on the record, those people that think they can put cheap old plonk into dinner, into meals and get away with it, you're wrong because your meal will just taste like cheap old rubbish. Whatever's wrong with the, with the wine, whether it be vinegary or too sweet or Whatever it happens to be, 
it will pass that trait on to the, the food you're cooking. Um, now I'm not recommending you go out and buy a $60 bottle of wine to put in this, but you don't go in and get something out of the $1.99 discount bin near the door either. Okay, that stuff is purely and simply for cleaning the grout in your shower cubicle, not for human consumption. You buy something respectable that you would drink. And that way, with this one, um, I always make it with a. Uh, here in Australia, we get a Banrock Station Chardonnay. And a good rule of thumb is when you're cooking with alcohol like this, you serve the same alcohol with it and it complements it. Um, and you'd be surprised the difference it makes. This is when you're, when you're dealing with spirits and um, liqueurs. Um, if you were soaking your Christmas uh, fruit mints, for example, and it calls for soaking in brandy, then just go to the shop and, and get a, just a good all-round brandy. Don't spend a fortune. No one expects you to go out and, and get some French cognac or something like that to for cooking, alright? So spirits and liqueurs are a bit different, but wines don't use cheap stuff. Now I have to say, this I normally eyeball. So I'm actually measuring it here, so bear with me, I'll let you know at the end how much goes in. Because I actually don't know, I've not, not had to measure it before. I just pour it in until it looks right. So... That wasn't bad guess. Okay. 600 mil is what that took. And as you can see, it's it's not quite covered, but it's it's getting there. You can you can see the level of the liquid. Okay. Now, at this stage, we pop our lid on. We pop it in a preheated oven. Um, we put it on 190C, 375F, um, or gas 4 to 5. Um, and we put it in there for about 50 minutes to an hour. Check at the end of it to make sure your chicken's cooked. Now. Once your chicken's cooked, bring it out of the oven and I'll be back with you at that stage to let you know what to do next. Okay. So that's been in the oven for about 50 minutes. It's smelling gorgeous. Now, the next thing, you're going to have to go fishing because we need all of the chicken out okay but we want everything else left behind Okay, having removed the chicken, we're going to add probably a couple of tablespoons of chopped parsley into the mix. Then what we're going to do is we are going to mix it. Alright, be careful not to splatter because it's hot. Now if you position it right, like I've done here, you'll just get a mix 
Manchester United and circular motion and get it well blended. Okay, then when you serve it, so you have a beautiful piece of chicken. And this most decadent of sauces. And there you go. That is a beautiful thing. Now if you serve that with fresh new potatoes and something like snow peas or green beans, that's all you'll need. This makes plenty of sauce. So you can put the sauce over the vegetables and it is just wonderful, absolutely wonderful. So that's how you make chicken and red pepper sauce. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss any of our other videos. Um, give us a thumbs up if you, if you like this video and you like this dish. Leave a comment or email us direct if you like. But in the meantime, that's all from Hilltop Farm, and I'm going to say, see ya!